Hello everyone and welcome back to Tabletop Translation Tuesday, recording attempt on this mission I have forgotten. This is going to be a very late episode because I've had corrupted files, I've had sound issues, and basically I'm starting to get sick of this. So let's try yet again to do this right. The train was an essential part of the commander's deployment strategy. So the first order of business was to take back the town. Commander, we seem to have forgotten something. Like, our army? An all-out siege would cost lives we can't spare. You and I will breach those walls with a surgical strike. Then we can move the battalion up safely. By surgical, you mean... You keep the Reds off me while I get those main gates open. Sir, there must be dozens of them. You're right. Hardly a fair fight. All they have are guns and spears. So, Sturgis is obviously feeling very confident about this. Now, something I was pointing out before, and I want to take a moment to do so, given that we've got two examples, is despite the fact that these two are from the same military force, their uniforms are kind of different, and it's something beyond the rank insignias and things like that. For example, Jake's here on her left shoulder has camera, thank you, as Lieutenant Peljans, or F, however you want to refer to it, indicators. Now, Sturgis there, looking over here, has the Swan of Sigma. Now, I don't know if that denotes rank. I'm Presuming it does. Nope, there's his rank. The commander on his left shoulder. I don't know if the position indicates anything. You would think not. You think that's one of the things that would be rather uniform about the uniforms. But there you have it. Now the reason that these two have such different looking uniforms is they're wearing what is arcane armor, and it's fitted to each individual warcaster to suit their needs as they prefer. Each Warcaster expresses what they're looking for in their armor, what they want to enhance, and it is directly powered by their magic. Without that, it wouldn't work. So let's get this show on the road and send Bandit up. That's my cursor. There it is. So, I want to see if we could go beyond. Oh, there we go. There's an ideal location. Out of the way of anything, gonna change facing, so at least facing the opposing army. Because facing is very important in this game. Strikes in the back do much more. We got to select manually instead of selecting the new person. So, on to Jake's. I should have left off with energy. That was silly of me. I will make do. It's not the one I wanted to go to, but it's too late to do anything about it now. Face her towards the army. And end the turn. Sturgis and an ironclad will run up and do their things. Sturgis might make a ranged attack here. Ah, move quickly, nope, Jake! Not this time. Don't let them exit that bunker! There are so many! Improvise! Improvise with what? There's nothing here but a bunch of wrecks and oil drums and And Jake's is puzzled with it. Blow up the barrels. Alright, so... Jake's is going to need to energize to give us a little bit of a better chance. I want to do as much range as possible, so that'll be up to three. The question is, does Bandit need the boost? Since it is immobile, he shouldn't, but... Based on my luck with the tabletop game, I'm going to presume he will. That'll keep him in control range. Get the one shot Jake's can do with her pistol. And miss. And then we'll use our magic. Because we have magic. He wants us to start off with Jake's, so we may as well. 
over here so she has some cover. And next is Bandit. Who we will simply move back into control range. That ends Jake's turn. So we're gonna go to Bandit. Get him to walk up. We're gonna get him to target the barrels. The other side, quickly! Sir, I might need to borrow some more bullets, or maybe say a chain gun? Too much chatter, Lieutenant! Move it! Yes, sir! Oh, can't change facing. Can I at least buy another attacking. Yep, there we go. Missed him too. Oh well. I had to spend a few bows on him in case I somehow missed those stationary barrels. That way I could buy another attack against the ah. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Not that I expect to get close enough to the barrels to matter. Once again, Bandit will be within magic range. Jake's change face. Missed again, jeez. Nobody wants to hit anything. Just move ahead. Bandit's turn. Again. Not change facing. And whatever we can fire at. Looks like it's just that winter guard. So we'll just boost. So I'm sick of seeing him. I want to get hit. There we go. Sturgis can finish him off. And Sturgis misses. Wow, that guy is lucky. Wail on him. Look at him fly. Oh, righty now. I think we're gonna stick the same pattern. Seems to be doing well for us so far. So they ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Iron Fangs, stay clear of their blasting pikes or they'll take you off your feet. I really don't think bringing along a few trenches would have been helpful. Concentrate, Jakes. Don't forget your magic. Jakes can at least start off shooting that barrel. No, not the Winter Guard. No, not the other Winter Guard. There we go. Hold them off! The gates are almost open! Oh, sure, sure. Take your time. I can do this all day. Next time, though, let's bring along a little more firepower. Now I'll have Jake's cast Energize. Probably won't. Yeah, I'll let me start with Bandit. Hopefully, that's me go back to Jake's. Oh, I'm gonna have to select Jake's form. Now, I know I'm being kind of dumb just moving up like that, but it's what I'm doing. I would like to be able to shoot the Iron Fang there up on our platform. But I think I'm out of bandits range for that. So we'll just shoot the Winter Guard. Do some decent damage to him. And let Sturgis and his Iron Fang get over. There goes that one. Blasting pikes! Sturgis Ready. isn't putting much effort into his Iron Fang. That gives me pause. Ah! Oh, here come our iron thing. Okay, so, can it 
should have a clear shot through the Pokemon. So we're going to get Bandit some extra focus this time around. We're going to start with Bandit. Oh, that's the wrong attack type. That's the wrong button entirely. Here we go. Boosting to hit and cause damage. And he dodges. Lucky SOB. Let's we're gonna fire on that one. Two, so he only gets the two shots, so we may as well boost both. And that's how it's done. Now, Jake's is more of a melee combatant than the ranged one. Even though she does have her hand cannon, its rate of fire is only one. But she has two uh, melee weapons, so we're gonna make use of those. Ooh, he withstood it. Should have guessed. No, I don't want to boost those. Oh, I need your attack. Because statistically speaking, that should put out more damage. I said should. Now I want to keep this guy in the front arc there. Otherwise, Jake's is going to eat free attack. Yes, I'm sure, because I don't want to see Jake's get in. Ironclad misses. Swats him, but he doesn't My do life a lot of damage. For Signar. Here comes Sturgis. We are Iron Fangs. And Sturgis is just there for positioning, it seems. Ooh, his back goes down. He gets wailed on. Oh, jeez. Oh, nothing there. I got knocked? Oh no, that's... Is that Bandit? Nope, it's not. Okay. Charger, though, I'm gonna want to run, so I will give him one focus. Jakes will keep the rest. Possibly energize him to take this guy out. So, there's our two initial attacks. Still standing, so we'll buy a third attack. Mechanical blade. Mechanical blade. You're still standing! Not allowed! Alright, last attack. Stop. There we go, and we get to sprint. And then we get Ben to move on up. He's got his focus already, so send him right over. Can I make that go? Apparently not. So that's the end of our turn. Sure just makes it Swing with a hammer. Hammer on, I reply. Backhand. Not the same option. It's like you got both. One out. Ooh. That's a melee I didn't know he had. Wonder if that was a glitch. Can't move up yet. Move Jake's on up. Last you, you're too far. Position and wait for the next turn. Ah! That was a nice shot by Sturgis. Okay, it's hammer time. No, it's not. It was dodged. Yeah. Not that time. Hammer time is just delayed.
Alright, Bandit, take this guy out and get him out of my way. I need that. That's not what I want. It's Jake's ring. I can do that. Running ring, not normal ring. So we'll start off with Bandit after all. Let's move this around so we can see this back clearly. Alright, Bandit. Swing away. Nice hit. One more should take him right out. So let's use all our last focus. All our own focus. Jake's had a focus, just in case. Jake's over up here. And we move on to Sturgis' turn. Still standing. Thankfully, I don't need any of it. Instead, just gonna activate Jake's. Special, oops, that's magic. Special abilities. Open the gate. No, nope, can't do it when there's reds. That's a pain in the butt. So, Bandit's gonna have to move up after all. Now, thankfully, Vorjax do have Vortexes, which are basically artificial brains, meaning that moving was not an issue. It's just anything enhancing or beyond the basic abilities was impossible. Because I could not direct my focus. Just in the nick of time. We're not quite, but better late than never, I suppose. Lieutenant Jakes. Commander. Your performance today. Too much talking, sir. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Well done. Thank you, sir. And so ends mission number two. Technically mission one, first one only a uh, tutorial. And no losses on my side. Now let's see what Jates gets for enhancement this time. Alright, looks like. Yes! Jakes gets a new focus, which increases her command range to her warjacks, as well as her versatility for boosting those warjacks and her own abilities, as well as casting spells. So thanks for joining for episode 2 of Tuesday Tabletop Translations. I will see you in a week. On Tuesday next time.